In this video, we will see how to implement database authentication to our Spring Boot app using Spring Security. We will start off with a quick review of our Spring Boot app which uses in-memory authentication and role-based authorization. You can watch my video Spring Boot and Spring Security getting started to see how we build this app. Next, we will convert the in-memory authentication to database authentication. We will be using MySQL as the backend database, but you can use any database and the steps should be the same. We will use bcrypt password encoder to encrypt our database password. Here I have Spring Tool Suite running on my machine, which is a flavor of Eclipse. Here is a controller class, test security controller, where using the add request mapping annotation, we have created various REST endpoints for the root, a not protected URL, a URL protected by user role, and a REST endpoint protected by admin role. Here is our security configuration class where we have implemented in-memory authentication with which we have created a user, dev user, with password as a keyword noop in curly braces and then our text password dev and assigned it a role of user. A second user, admin user, with password as admin and roles assigned as role user and role admin. For authorization, we are saying that authorize all requests and when the URL is having slash protected by user role and then we put an asterisk to allow for anything else after that, say request parameters. We say that allow access to anyone with the user role. We want to authorize the URL protected by admin role with access only to the users with admin role. And then for the root URL and the URL with not protected asterisk, we want to permit all, so allow public access. Please watch my video, Spring Boot and Spring Security getting started for more discussion and explanation of these. Let us take a quick demo of this app as of now. Go to the browser. Let us type the root URL and it is accessible. Similarly, when we access the not protected endpoint, it is accessible. Let us change it to protected by admin role and we are prompted for a username and password by this login form which the framework renders for us. We can, by the way, also specify our own login page. Let us enter the dev user and its credentials dev and as expected, it will not allow anyone without the admin role. Now, let us clear the history and the cache and now submit the URL again. Enter the admin user and its password admin and we get access. Let us change the URL to protected by user and it allows us in as the browser has cached the admin username and password and the admin user also has the user role. Let us clear the history and cache, refresh the page again, enter the dev user and password dev and it has access as it has the user role. Alright, let us convert the in-memory authentication to database authentication. Let us first google Spring Security Database Schema which brings us to this URL on docs.spring.io website where there is a reference provided by Spring for the database table structures to support database authentication. It expects a user's table with columns, username, password and whether it is enabled or not. Another table authorities which has a foreign key to the username of the user's table, authority or roles assigned. Note these are the default table and column names it expects but Spring also allows us to use our own names and we will see how to specify our custom table and column names later. Alright, I have a MySQL database running on my machine. Let me log in using user demo user. Let us use the demo schema. Here, let me paste the SQLs to create the users and authorities table. Here is a unique index on the authorities table including username and authority columns. Alright, before we insert data, we have to generate encoded passwords. Spring Security supports multiple password encoders. We will use bcrypt as it is a good encoder. Now, here in our project, let me create a new class by right clicking on the com.example.demo package, choosing new class and calling it encode password. This class need not be in this project, but I created it here for convenience. 
Let me paste some code here to save us some time. Here we are taking the password dev, creating a new instance of the bcrypt password encoder and then generating a hashed password using password encoder dot encode method. We are then printing it out. Similarly, we are generating a bcrypt encoded password for the literal text admin and printing it. Let us run this class as a Java application and we see the bcrypt encoded passwords here. Now let us go back to our MySQL session. Let us insert in the users table username password enabled specify username as dev user password for dev user let us copy it from here and paste it enabled is true similarly let us insert the admin user and password let us copy the encoded password from here for the literal text admin and paste it here enabled is true next let us insert in the authorities table username dev user and give it the role user insert in the authorities table the admin user with role role underscore user and role underscore admin let us comment all right we are good with the database now let us go to our application dot properties file and put the spring dot data source dot driver class name as com dot mysql dot jdbc dot driver spring data source url as mysql running on local host listening on port 3306 we have pointed it to the schema demo username is demo user and its password is password when spring boot sees this it will automatically configure a data source and make it available for our app but we have to add a couple of dependencies first let me right click choose maven and dependency the first one is for spring boot starter data jpa let's add this let us add another dependency for mysql connector now let us go to our security config class authorization stays the same let us auto wire the data source first in a variable spring boot will do the heavy lifting for us to inject it here let us remove the in memory authentication let us add authentication manager dot jdbc authentication choose the data source as our auto wired data source password encoder as new bcrypt password encoder so it will generate a bcrypt password hash for the password entered by the user on the login screen compare it with the bcrypt encoded password we had inserted in the database earlier that is it let us run this app by right clicking and choosing run as spring boot app go to the browser our root url is still accessible so is the not protected url for the protected by user role our dev user with password dev has access now let us clear the history and the cache and the protected by admin role has access using admin user and password admin so our database authentication works beautifully now to consider the case where our table and column names may not be users and authorities let us go to our mysql session and rename our authorities table to user underscore roles change its column authority to role let us change the column name password in the users table to passwd now let us go to the browser clear the cache and submit the protected by users url enter dev user and password dev and this time it does not recognize it go back to our security config class and say dot users by username query and specify the query to get the username and password and enabled for a given username similarly using authorities by username query specify the table and column name to get username and role so this is how we specify our custom table names and columns let's save this let us stop the app, restart our app, let's go to the browser and access the protected by user URL, enter dev user, password dev and it works again. In this video we saw how to enable database authentication for our Spring Boot app, how to use bcrypt password encoder 
and how to specify our custom table and column names. Thanks for watching.